Okay, next we'll talk about the body hook. So now we're bringing the levels down with the circular style punches. And again, if I were to look at this from the boxing perspective, okay, see this nice coiled spring action. Now, as opposed to the head hook, which is basically parallel to the floor and perpendicular to my body, this is more of a diagonal technique that's almost like even with the sweep of my thigh, right? You see everything kind of working uh, on this angle. So up to this point, structurally, everything we've delivered on the punches has been with my shoulders and hips basically in this grid square, right? Jab, cross, okay, doing the hook, okay, uppercuts from here, right? It's all been working on that grid where my shoulders and hips turning together, okay? This is a case where we have our other functional striking structure, which is basically everything on the tilt of work, right? So I put the tilt on the, on the technique. So it's not just a matter of like dipping to the side for a load now and staying on the same plane. This time I'm actually creating a tilt on my body. So my shoulders now are working in this orientation. And there are certain strikes that are more more functional to take place from this particular structure. So once I've made the tilt, created my load, I'm in range to throw it, okay? I'm going to bring everything up through that pivot. And in boxing, it's from very low, and you see this spring there. Now from up upstairs, I will still dip and put the tilt on, but it's just going to be from slightly higher, okay? Heads over the front toes, and then from here, generating that power, directly okay, into anywhere from the floating rib to you know the the old liver punch right which would just shut somebody down no matter how tough they are so that's going to be our main strike again as with the high hook okay, i'm going to focus more on the lead side if you are able to get a good angle you can for sure throw this on both sides um, it's actually a little bit safer i believe in most cases than throwing a high head hook because you're typically going to be in closer it's going to be a little more of an infighting technique to throw the rear side body hook right now i'm going to focus on the lead because that's the one most people will throw more off so let's take a look at that on the pad and uh coach kevin here has the belly pad so i've got a few things i need to do to throw this safely because we come back to the consideration of range as well so that i don't level change right in front of him and all of a sudden he's teeing off on me and never get a chance to throw it so First thing is I need to get in close enough, much like I need to be close for um, an uppercut or a lead hook if it's a closer, like shorter version of those, not the, not the longer version as the setup to a kick, for instance. Second thing is I need to level change, and the third thing is I need to create the angle, right? Because I'm not going to throw a body shot right here in front of my partner. First, I'm gonna to have to cut off to the side. So if I were throwing my lead body hook right now, I want to close this distance somehow, probably with prep punches or slipping off uh, basically off of one of his techniques. So I get in close enough, I level change, and you notice that now this foot is slightly outside his back foot, so I've cut an angle to the side. And then from here, I am lowering my level a little bit, I just don't need to be quite as low as a boxing version. And I'm gonna bring that technique straight into the belly pad, so it's kind of this slightly upward angle slightly upward trajectory. I'll create the same load here with my with my punch that we talked about before um, to uh, create that little rolling motion, give a little extra torque into the punch, but I'm just, again, simply not gonna lower myself quite as much. So from here, go to the side and As soon as you deliver the technique, you want the rebounding effect to bring your hip right back and your guard right back to your jog. 